matter of far, a home will commemorate the lives and the stories that homes contain. Think of your home. Think of your house. The stories that are told. This memorial home going service will coincide with the building demolition as an opportunity to celebrate the lives of the homes that this home has touched. When you think back perhaps to the house you grew up in um, or a, a bedroom that was really important to you, there is a, an emotional tie to that place and to those four walls. And I, I feel that most people um, have cared at one point or another for those places that they've lived. Funeral for a Home is an opportunity as both a, an art project as well as a public history project to reflect on the meaning of our housing stock here in Philadelphia. Try to think about it as if this is the last year of this home's life. And so this is an opportunity to commemorate the stories and the families that lived in that home um, and to give it a proper memorial service. Particularly you know, at a time in Philadelphia when so many homes are demolished um, and have been over the last five decades really. If you were to look on any number of real estate websites, most of them will cite 1925 as the construction date for that house for 3711 Mellon. If you go back to the city atlases though, you see that that block was developed as early as the 1870s. At a time from about 1895 to about 1920, Philadelphia was, was putting up houses at almost about the rate of 10 a day. So that was a heck of a lot of homes to come up. And in the wake of that, you have a surplus really of, of some housing in the city. The demographic trends from Mantua, primarily an Irish-American neighborhood. By the 30s, that's when you kind of see the impact of, you know, what we refer to as the Great Migration from the South, when a lot of thousands, you know, over a million really black families uh, migrated from the Upper and Lower South to Midwestern and Northeast cities and West Coast cities as well. So by 1940, um, and really by 1950, Mantua was a solidly black neighborhood. What this project is intent to do is to give us a moment to reflect on these houses that hundreds of them are, are set to be demolished. Um, and this is our way of saying thank you, but also to reflect on all of the, the lives that have, that have been shared in those homes. Rob got word of work that Billy and Stephen Dufala had done. They're also local artists and primarily sculptors, um, and they have a they have a particular interest in kind of everyday objects and kind of reorienting them, reorienting them in just a, a slight way. So they did a thing where they took a, a giant dumpster and refashioned it as a coffin. So it was a 20 yard dumpster that was kind of decorated, had an inside that was looked plush. Um, I think it was like, that's the same road that right. this project is probably on. When, right? you're, when you're pulling down a building, there will be a 20 yard dumpster out front of that building. That, that the building that is that going building into. into. So you're like, oh, this is already part of what that would probably look like. And these guys are already creatively there. So we're responsible for the funeral. Yeah. After this whole year of programming and development and collection of histories and whatever, whatever, we're responsible for that day. We were primarily looking for a standalone home, simple, ideally two stories, um, and something that was beyond saving. There was a lot of going to the civic association meetings. There was a lot of talking with neighbors, talking with people who had been in the, in the community for a long time. And we knew that once we found a neighborhood, it was gonna be about that specific place's history, and we were gonna to try to get to as close to the personal story of the house and the families that were there. And Really, the, the family that has, I think, the most residents for people who currently live in Mantua and who lived there for, from 1946 until um, the early 2000s was um, a woman named Leona Richardson. 
She was a single mother. Uh, she worked as a seamstress for the Wanamaker's department store. Um, and she had a son, Roger. There's a very real thing to having the population of Mantua invested to a degree where their priorities are represented in this too. Mantua is a very proud place I've come to discover. Um, and I think it's a, it's a neighborhood that um, has to fight against a lot of misperceptions. I was born here, so you're talking about close to, phew, man, 55 years of history that I can remember, you know. Miss Richardson had a beautiful home again, and Roger, again, he had everything as a kid. You know, most time you look on TV and you may see toys that you want, Roger had them. So when six years old, and like I said, it was nine of us in my family, a lot wasn't going around. We could always go to Roger and get all the best toys, and we sit there and have a great time. So after the Richardsons left, it was primarily renters, and it seems like it was a bit of a revolving door. The first time we went into the house was in November of last year. It was apparent that people were squatting in that home for probably a while, and probably not that much earlier than when we had first stepped in. And I think that, that visit made the project um, real, in a way, for, for, all the, for the whole team. It's an uneasy feeling, you know? Um, you do feel like you're trespassing. They are technically trespassing, but when you're talking about actual people and actual lives, the principles kind of fall away, right? And you're dealing with actual emotional stuff. I think that's part of what the project is about, is like being able to shine a light on something that's so easy to miss because there's so much of it. To get from that 30,000 foot view where it's just like you're not even seeing it anymore down to the one house and being able to recognize it. A lot of times people do love their homes and so they, it, it, it's a, it has an emotional significance when it's gone. It is sad. You know, I think that's part of the point. It's, it's sad when a house is lost. But in the same way that funerals are often a celebration of life. As long as it's going to make the neighborhood better, you know what I mean, I'm all for it. And matter of fact, I'm going to make sure it's going to be better because I'm right here. We are here. We are here to remember the past. We are here to reflect on the present we are here to look for the future when i think of 3711 mellon street i think of aunt leon and roger living in the big town of philadelphia my grandmother would bring me here to visit aunt leona when i was small i have a picture of my mother and aunt leona and me as a baby and i was sitting on her lap let this house be uh, this whole thing be a way to join people together and realize that if you can have a funeral for a house, there's a resurrection. That's right. And the resurrection should be the neighborhood. Thirty-seven eleven will be missed. This corner, this structure will disappear. What remains are the memories the memories of what happened while it stood here. Let us never forget 3711 and the other attached homes that were here. The attached homes that created the community of Mantua. Down the way, the black bottom. This, our home, where many of us were born and raised.